Okay, that's enough of that. Right, what we need to do now is get the flywheel off and the clutch off and get the engine stand on. So, again, Ford were kind enough to put a beverage holder there for me. Let us get the flywheel off. Uh, let's have a look what this clutch looks like after 100,000 miles. Oh, you can't see anything up there, can you? Let's get you down here. Not too bad, just starting to wear out really. Look, the pads there are just starting to join up. So that is good timing for a new clutch. Oh. I knew that would happen at some point. <coughs> Let's see if we can get this on here. engine now on the stand so this makes it a lot easier to start stripping it all off what I would advise is I've just gone round with my phone and just videoed all the ancillaries and all the connections because this is the type of thing you're going to forget you're going to forget where all these nuts and bolts go uh, but again as I say what I would do is, is as you take them off try and leave these in with the bracket and to aid this a rare sight I have cleared my bench of rubbish so I'm going to lay all the ancillaries on there that I start to take off this engine. I dare say it'll be a bit more coolant out and I'll probably miss catching that as well. Yep, what did I say?
Oh, now we're seeing some sparkly bits in there. There. That's the problem. That's got red hot. You can see it's black there compared to the silver of these. Grab the bearing, spun the bearing, then extruded the bearing out at the bottom in tin foil. So I want to take the crank out so have a look at that. To take the crank out, I need the cam belt off. To get the cam belt off, I need the cam cover off. End of the engine here, and to get that off, I need the top cover off. So I'm going to have to put the engine the right way up again. I managed to keep all the screws in place. Woohoo! That takes the tension off. So I can slide the belt off. There. So there. That there is the problem of the engine failure. And you can see the belt is shredding itself now already. Can you see that there? No, you probably can't. Anyway, it's a load of rubbish. So we're getting deep into the bowels of the engine now. Uh, we've got the timing chains off. We can now, I've cracked these off and you do them in a, in a sequence uh, and I'm going to start to have a look at these main bearings and it's very important you keep them in the same orientation and the same way around so as you take them off lay them on the floor in the order that they're going to go back on because they are line board through, machined through What did we do before power tools? So, let's take, ooh, and that's a release of smell of oil. Definitely. Now then, there's the first one. So let's take a look at this. Now that does look good. That does look good, so I'm pleased with that. Obviously we know there's one of them that's not good. So let's try and put these somewhere where we don't manage to get them all muddled up. That is also good. I don't know why I'm saying these are good because the, 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 the actual crank is scrap. But at least it means these haven't got damaged. Yeah, looks good. The last one. Yeah, good. Right, I'm happy with that. Of course, what I should have done is disconnected all the conrods as well, so let me just do that. Same with these. These are marked. These are positioned. Let's just rotate it round to make it easier. These are marked up on the caps. So, it's got a number one on here and it'll line up, you probably can't see it but it's got a one there, a line for a one and it will line up with a line on the other side. So again I'm just going to take these off very carefully, put them down, probably kick them all over the floor in a minute. This was that shot it just lifted off. Oh yeah, that's bad. And then the last one. Here. And that's that one off, and that was good as well, but it was just the middle one here, so we can now lift the little baby crank out there and let's get it on the table and have a look at it now this is the one that will have the thrust washers on as well yep thrust washers are in place bit of pickup on that thrust what yeah that thrust washers got a bit of wear on it there so that wasn't good so yeah I think we have minimized well, we, whoever was running the car, has minimised the damage to just a crank 
and a con rod and that is still fused in there. I don't know if you can see that. That there is the bear fused inside it. It should look it should look like that one. Let's just show you. Should look like that one there. Which is nice and silver, not black and burnt. So I think it's going to need a new con rod because I don't want to trust that because that'll have a little bit of heat treatment, but that can be a nice souvenir. So crank out, let's have a look at this. So what we've got, um, and it's probably not so easy to see. So that one, that one, that one, and that one are the main bearings. And that one, that one, and this one, sorry, that one, that one, and that one are for the con rods. And what you can see fairly clearly is this has got a good surface on it. This has got a good surface. This one has. This one hasn't. This is completely wrecked and you can feel the ridges in it. This one has got a bit of mark in the middle. This has also got the thrust washer on the side. What the thrust washer is for is when you press the clutch which is on this end it tries to push the crankshaft against the block. So this has a thrust surface here with oil being between and you can see on this side it's actually black and it shouldn't be black there it should be shiny like this even though that has a groove in it that crank is scrap we need a crank a con rod we want to take the oil pump apart and see what that's like I think it's probably just the filter at the bottom that's blocked we want to start getting the cams off now so we can get to the head bolts and these cam uh, retainers Camshaft retainers are uh, labelled A, B, C, D and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 there could be 5 in there so we're going to get these bits at the end off, this is the fuel pump housing uh, get this bit off, I'm not quite sure what that bit is but take that bit off and then we can get the two cams out and equally the cams are low identity up so you've got an I there for inlet and an E there for exhaust so these are all marked up so So we've hit a bit of a problem. Um, all the parts are available for the engine, the crank, the bearings, pistons, piston rings. However, what is not available, or common knowledge to the average DIYer, and I've searched high and low on forums, is the torque settings for the crank and the conrod. And again, years gone by, it would be torque tightened to 100 newton meters and that would be it in a certain order anyway what appears to have happened is we've basically Ford don't want you to rebuild the bottom end on this engine I spoke to an engine shop that rebuilds engines they'll sell you all the parts but I can appreciate as well they don't really want to um, tell you what the torque settings are because it's 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 their business so it's it's fine the other thing is, by the time you've actually priced up a crank, a conrod, bearings, then if you found the information for the bolts, there's any information that, that is misguided, or not, not, not misguided, there's any information, um, or misinformation I should say, on the bolts. Both the conrod bolt and the big end bolts are torqued to an angle. Usually when bolts are torqued to an angle, they are stretch bolts so they're disposed of afterwards. Some people are saying you re can reuse them, some people say you can't. You can't buy them. Ford will not sell you any of this. Obviously these people are getting them from elsewhere or rebuilding the engines or reusing them. Um, then you need a torque multiplier for the um, crankshaft bolt. It just got too much hassle to be honest. Uh, I was probably up to about £700 in parts and then lack the knowledge and for a £1,000 you can get an engine rebuilt from sump to camshaft and it's completely overhauled and more importantly it comes with a warranty 
so there we go engine delivered old engines looking sorry for itself down there and so it should be now one of the other things I hadn't thought of really is in this rebuilt engine it comes back and all but they've obviously they'll have skimmed the head the valves have been cleaned I might as well show you on the clean engine but anyway that's the old engine so I've stripped that ready to go back I've just got that oil cooler to come off so that's um, bye bye and um, hello new engine so this comes like I say like this it's a thousand pound plus VAT so it's not bad really uh, and it's fully rebuilt it's either got a reground crank or a new crank in new bearings big end bearings new main bearings it's honed new piston rings the um, crank uh, sorry the the camshaft has been reground as well so remember I had some slight marks on there so they've gone now um, it's all been torqued up correctly it's got a new belt on new oil pump oil pump clean this is torqued on so it basically comes as you see now ready to go in so what I've got to start doing now is put all the ancillaries back on the engine which I have here which have arrived so we've got the gaskets and the new clutch um, and then we've got all the bits on the bench so they've all got to go back in so I think we'll leave it there for now and um, save it for the next episode to actually start rebuilding that engine and get it back in so thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe of course you don't have to um, just watch um, and hopefully we'll have this up and running quite soon thank you <laughs>